Okay, today this lesson is just reviewing some of the things we've looked at in FileMaker that um, are increasing the usability of our form design and the efficiency of our form design. So um, if you can look here where I'm pointing, um, we've got some alignment, so we'll look again at those alignment tools. Um, adding in a photo, so adding in a container field, and these two fields down here are actually calculated fields, and those are calculated based on the birth date so that we don't have to calculate those in our head. And then, so that's efficiency and accuracy, and also changing the style of this input form to a date picker widget, and that increases usability, efficiency, accuracy. So first of all, to review some of those things, let's go into the Edit Layout tab and click on the birth date field. And looking at the birth date field in the inspector, if we look to the appearance of it, by default, the appearance is in the style of, oops, sorry, in the data tab, by default it comes up as an edit box. And that's not very useful because then people can put in the birth date in several different formats and may not put it in correctly. So this forces people to um, put in the correct date format, picking the actual date picker. So if we change it to a drop down calendar, and then we have the option where we can include the icon, and that's helpful for people so that they know that there's an icon available for them. The other thing that we can do, um, you can change it from normal to a hover state. We can change pressed in focus. We can change all of that, what it looks like, if we want to changing the things on the appearance. Um, but we'll just leave the defaults there because it's just fine as it is. And in the position tab, you can actually add a, a tool tip so that actually increases usability as well. So we put in day, day, slash month, month, slash year, 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 in case people do want to type it straight in, they still can. And that's the format that we're looking for. So I'll close out of that for the moment. Um, the other thing, if we look in the field picker, you can add new fields besides the ones that were just imported. The photo field has been added as a container, and container fields can um, contain any sort of other data, for example, a video, um, link to a file or a photo image. And so that's just by clicking on the new field, naming it, and I'll just put photo 2. I'll get rid of this because I already have one, and changing that to a container field. Um, I am going to delete that field because I don't actually need that extra one. And then when you drag a field out onto your form. You can just go through the resizing. Holding down shift, remember, scales things proportionately. But since this is more of a rectangular, rectangular photo, I'm sorry, a square photo than rectangular, then I don't need to resize it proportionately. Um, note that we don't have the actual photo in there right now. We need to do that when we exit the layout. And then the other thing, the things that I've added, and I'll just add one here. Let's, I'm going to call this cycling age two. And if we change that to a calculation field, then it will pop up automatically for us and have us specify the calculation that we want to occur. So, here, what we want to happen with the cycling age is it's taken from the end of the year, so we actually perform a calculation 
2014 minus, and there are all sorts of different functions that are available. There's different text functions where you can put things together, like concatenate two fields together, um, time functions, um, date functions. So I'm going to go into the date functions, and it tells me that we can get the year out of a certain date. So that function returns the year out of a date. So I do year, and I can't just put in date. I have to actually put in the field. And you can either just type it or double click. So find the year of their birth date. And so cycling age is going to equal 2014 minus the year of their birth date. And I can click OK. Um, again, I don't need that one because I already have one. For the tr so I'll delete it. For the triathlon age, go into my field options there. It's 2013 because it's the age as of the beginning of the year. So 2013 minus the year of their birth date field. And then that will do some automatic calculation for me. Now, with the photo field, I'm going to look at my inspector. And I can look at um, the appearance. So if I want to add any sort of border, and I could add a dashed border pick the size of the border and the color, and I've just picked a color that goes with the color scheme. Um, and you can also change the corner radius so it's more of a rounded border if you so choose. Um, there are other things. Um, you can add a shadow, <coughs> excuse me, an outer shadow, or you can add some padding, which you know from HTML, CSS, um, so you can add some padding. So to the graphic that goes in, and if there were any text, you can change those sorts of things. So we've changed some formatting on that photo field so that it has a dashed line on it. Um, and then the other thing I'd like to look at is the alignment tools. So This helps to increase accuracy and efficiency rather than trying to eyeball things. If, for example, these fields are out of line, if I highlight more than one field, I can use the alignment here. I'd want to align them on their left edges so they're all equal on their left edges. If I wanted to ensure that there was the exact same amount of space between them, um, I can use the distribute, and that ensures that there is the same amount of space. Um, I can move those as a group. What I'm doing here is using my arrow key, and when I do that, to move them over, I can also see that they're aligned with the top of the other two things. So that helps. And um, what I may do, since I've moved these manually, if I want those to be perfectly aligned, because I can see visually they're not, then I can align them on their tops. And that just ensures that I've got accurate alignment. And then if I want to align the label and the actual cell on their horizontal centers, just in case they're off just a bit, then I've got good accurate alignment. So if we look at that and we exit the layout, and save changes to the layout. 
Um, remember that you can just then drag and drop the actual image in. So you have those images in your images folder and you can physically drag them into the empty um, into the empty photo container that we have and then that populates the database. So I'm going to go to a new record for right now and just make up a person. Now if you notice my tab order is wrong, we'll be looking at that. So when I press tab it goes across instead of down and that's not what I want. So tab go into the mother cell, student cell. With the birth date, I can just pick the birth date and if I scroll back in time, so I'm going to go back to about 95, oh nobody, 96, there might be some year 13 students that were born in 96. So if I pick that, August 21st, 1996, notice that it automatically calculates that for me. It also automatically jumps to father cell because I haven't set my tab order. And then I can put in the home phone data and, um, and again it's annoying. Remember we're talking about efficiency because it's actually not. Um, in the correct tab order for me and I'm so used to keying and hitting tab for efficiency that really wasn't working. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do to make this more efficient for the user, so we've put in a drop down list, um, I mean sorry, a drop down calendar, we have these automatically calculated fields, is that we need to um, fix our tab order.